Hey team, this is Nathan from RunTroomAchieve.com. Hope your training is going well. Today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about a very, very difficult goal, but I know a lot of athletes around the world have it, and that is to run a two hour, 20 minute marathon. In my own career and start, you know, having running, I started running when I was in, 19, in 1992 as a freshman in high school. Uh, I finally achieved this particular goal uh, in 2007. I finished uh, in fourth place in the top American at the 2007 California International Marathon, uh, finishing with a, a time of two hours, 19 minutes, and 35 seconds. I hit the first half marathon in in the race in 107.09, and then came back the second half with a 112.26. And I will tell you from experience that anybody that's going uh, for a sub two hour and 20 minute marathon, uh, you had better have done your homework. Uh, sometimes you can do everything perfectly correct and not run under the two hour and 20 minute marathon marathon barrier. And I'll tell you from my own background, I, I never e even, uh, I always felt like I could do it, but my goal was to run under two hours and 22 minutes. I felt like I had the capability to, to run a sub 220 marathon, you know, when I was at my peak running when I was 31 years old, uh, but having, you know, to, to go out and actually do it, uh, it is truly a, a it's a special occasion for sure of any athlete that's that's had the ups and downs of training for a sub 220 marathon. So if you're trying to go after this, you know I I'll tell you without question, you have to have an immense amount of patience. Um, I had so many uh, difficulties with the marathon distance to a point where I thought that the marathon might not be my best event. Um, I was a you know I ran the mile and the two mile in high school. I was a 4.25 miler and a 9.46 two miler when I was in high school. Uh, ran collegiately, um, really didn't run super fast and even in college. I ran 1519 for 5,000 meters uh, on the track and four flat for the 1500 meters, uh, 2432 for AK in cross country, um, what, 113 for the half uh, when I was a, a junior at Malone University in Canton, Ohio. We had a very strong uh, cross country and track team. A lot of history with Jack Hazen being the coach. Uh, he's one of the world's top distance running coaches. It's been in Malone for 52 years. Um, and and so my plan of attack with the marathon distance was longevity. I knew that to run under two hours and 22 minutes was not going to happen in a matter of days or months, uh, maybe you know perhaps years. And, and that's pretty much what, how it turned out. Um, two hours and 20 minutes for the marathon requires you to run 520 per mile for for 26.2 miles at an average mile pace of 520 or three minutes and 19 seconds per kilometer for 42.2 k so many athletes can sustain that pace for several miles for several kilometers okay but it's the problem is being able to minimize lactic acid buildup in the body and in the muscles while we're racing that is which screws a lot of athletes up. And it's a mental game too. I mean, you already know as a long distance runner how important uh, being mentally tough and tenacious in your race is. You have to do so many things correctly to run under a two hour and 20 mar minute marathon. Um, and for me personally, a lot of the things that I was doing wrong that perhaps by sharing this will help you is I was not drinking enough in the race. Uh, I was running far too aggressively uh, in the in the marathons that I ran prior to breaking two hours and 20 minutes uh, it, Where I was simply not prepared. I was not ready to run at those types of efforts You know my, my debut marathon was at the 2002 New York City Marathon. I was a part of a armed forces uh, Team that was comprised uh, for lung cancer research uh, We weren't permitted to start that race until every runner had start had crossed the start line and then for every runner that we passed so we started in dead last, 32,189th place. We weren't allowed to start. Once every runner had crossed the start line, then we were let, you know, allowed to start. So I finished as the team's top finisher in two hours, 43 minutes and 36 seconds uh, in 257th place. So I went from dead last to 257th. Um, had no idea what I was doing. I still remember the first mile was in 16 minutes flat going up the Verrazano Bridge because again, I was trying to bob and weave through, you know, thousands of people. Uh, again, starting the last place, you're, you know, once we start catching up to people. Um, so I didn't break two hours and 20 minutes until five years later. So, and in that time from 2002 to 2007, 
I had many setbacks. I had many times where I'd run um, in the 240s and the 250s, had several bad races, uh, for, for me anyways, that was trying to, where I had shown potential in other races, such as like 10 miles, I was able to run 50, 54. I was run my personal best prior to breaking 219 or pri prior to breaking 220 was 107 of six for the half. But yet I was still a 240 marathoner. You know, I had proved at the 2007 Grandma's Marathon from 243.36 to 240.02 in that race. And I went out the first half in 110. So, and came back with a 130. So you can understand where, again, I wasn't yet mature enough yet, and I had not put in the, the heavy anaerobic work to, to, to really perfect being able to sustain that pace throughout the, for the whole race. Um, I was still at, at around 225 marathon pace through 20 miles, but the last 10K, I was pretty much jogging and walking. I was just absolutely shot. And again, that's why I always talk about in other videos, um, you know, when you're in the early stages of, of trying to run fast for the marathon, especially what you're trying to do here, you know, having, have ex having experienced what it takes, uh, you're pretty much going to have to live, breathe, and, and and think running to run this fast. Um, I'm not not to say you can't enjoy yourself. Definitely enjoy yourself. Don't lose the enthusiasm what you're doing, uh, because your your mental uh, health as well is very important. But don't lose sight of the fact that hey, this is just running, okay? But if you're wanting to run two hours and 20 minutes, you have to get beyond just putting in volume. High volume is not going to get you a faster time. I got up to 142 miles a week and it left me tired, fatigued, irritable. And, and when I dropped down to 85 to 90 miles a week, that's when I broke two hours and 20 minutes. So volume is not the answer. It's what you're putting into the volume. It's that quality over quantity. Okay. And, and the faster you're trying to race, the more speed plays a part, the more running longer tempo runs at your anaerobic threshold, training for longer periods of time, preferably around uh, 16K to 25K in, in length for those tempo runs. Get accustomed to running for long periods of time at your anaerobic threshold because you're going to be racing at that effort or very close to it. So, you know, even portions of your marathon, you're going to be running faster than anaerobic threshold. So you have to get beyond shorter, just running shorter tempo runs. So it's again, quality over quantity. You have to get to a point when I was at my fittest prior to breaking two hours and 20 minutes, I'll tell you what I did. I did, I was in Colorado Springs at 6,000 feet. I remember doing, um, actually at, at Cheyenne Mountain High School at 6,400 feet, I did six one mile repetitions all between 444 and 447 per rep uh, with two minutes recovery in between each one of those reps. That, and I did that about two weeks prior to breaking two hours and 20 minutes. I did a three, two mile repetitions on the track. And I still remember I hit 950, 952 and 1001. And I had a five minute recovery between each one of those efforts. All of those workouts were done by myself. I was a part of the Army World Class Athlete Program in 2007 when we didn't have a Paul Chalimo, we didn't have, um, you know, a Hillary Bohr or these other athletes that have, that are making, that just made the Olympic team here in, in, uh, in, in Eugene last week. Uh, if you look at the armywcap.com website, you'll see that the entire team is just about comprised of uh, Kenyan-born soldier athletes. And, you know, when I was there, I was a part of a, an experimental uh, group. It was called, you know, it was, I was under conditional status because I, prior to 2007, I didn't have a national ranking in the marathon. I had made two Armed Forces World Cross Country uh, teams. I'd run 51-53 prior to to arriving at the at Fort Carson for the Army World Class team, uh, but I didn't have a national ranking in, in the marathon. I had a personal best of, like I said, 243.36. So it's a process, okay. And and running two hours and 20 minutes, you have to you have to get efficient at clearing lactic acid and being very very focused and driven, and time your training correctly, okay. This is a very fast time. Uh, I, I credit this particular effort, you know, having broken two hours and 20 minutes to uh, just nonstop demanding training for several years. Uh, I pretty much ran from 1992 all the way to 2007 uh, before I broke two hours and 20 minutes. So that'll give you an idea. And I've known a lot of athletes over the years that could run 
uh, under 14 minutes for the 5K that, that I've trained with that ran much faster than me in all other track events and, and on the roads that never broke two hours and 20 minutes. The stars just aligned that particular day. Um, you know, a few weeks prior to running under two hours and 20 minutes, I ran 107.06 for the half. I ran 50.54 for 10 miles. So I, I was prepped and ready. And so for you, if you're getting close to this barrier, um, if you've run under two hours and 30 minutes, or say you're at 235 now, or, or maybe even 240, and you're dreaming about 219.59, get start doing those long runs at a faster clip, okay? Um, start mixing up and varying up the paces of your long runs. Alternate a harder, more moderate to hard effort long run, followed by an easy, relaxed long run the, the following week, because it's going to take, uh, you know, some of my long runs took me up to about, uh, two to three days of recovery, easy jogging after I did those hard efforts. So the recovery piece is, uh, is absolutely critical, okay? It's very easy for us to train hard and, you know, on the track and on the roads. We're, we, don't, we don't have any problems doing that. We all have that discipline and motivation to, to, to train fast. But if you're trying to run this fast, you've also got to be very smart in, in what you're doing on your recovery days, what you're doing off the track and on the track as well. You must start, you must pay attention to your nutrition. I have nutritiongeeks.com. That is a website resource that's there for you. Um, I think it's very important to the, the proper, taking in proper amounts of hydration in your long runs so that when you get to the race and you're in that marathon event, um, you become efficient at grabbing your water bottles or grabbing or just grabbing a few Dixie cups and drinking the entire contents of those cups and not just sipping you know, that's a big problem too that I had over the years that I was not paying attention to. I was sipping in the race thinking that, you know, the equivalent of two to three Dixie cups was going to get me to the finish line. Okay. You have to pay attention to taking in those gels. Uh, I'd put, I'd, if I were you, I'd recommend putting a gel on your left uh, shorts and on the left side of your shorts and the right hand side of your shorts as well. Uh, try to get a pair of shorts that has pockets on both sides and then take that gel to at mile 17 or 18 because we only have about 1,700 to 1,800 calories of carbohydrate. So the faster you're training in training, you're teaching the body to burn what you have a ton of, and that is fat storage, okay? The best marathoners have trained their bodies to rely on fat storage and conserve what they have much less of, and that's carbohydrate. You wanna make sure that you have those carbs and that glycogen, in the, and especially in the last 10 kilometers of the race when everybody else is really starting to, to tire mentally and physically, and you want to be able to, to be more effective and sustain this this fast pace uh, for the, especially the last 10k because that's where really you're gonna um, the the make or break of getting across the finish line with a 219.59 on the clock is is going to come about. Okay, you have to be mentally strong. You have to um, watch your pacing. Okay, I'm not saying a uh, a positive split is you know going to cause you from to not run under two hours and 20 minutes. Like I said, I went out in 107.09, which was only three seconds slower than my PR for the half marathon, which was 107.06. Okay, so I was way in over my head, but I had done my work in, home, in, in training. I was running with a group of Kenyans, uh, a Canadian guy and a Russian, uh, actually the Russian that finished behind me in fifth place in 223. He had a PR coming into that race of 212. So I was in a group that I was running with guys that were much, much faster than me. So get beyond what the other athletes that you're you're competing against have run, okay? I didn't know even know who these guys were until after the race and how fast they were. All I knew was I had done my work and training. I was well prepared. I was running well below five minutes and 25 second mile pace in training, which is two hours and 22 minute marathon pace. That was my goal. I had run several, several uh, weeks of mile repetitions well under 450. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I had done two mile repetitions well under five minute mile pace at altitude. I was doing long tempo runs uh, anywhere from around 10 miles out to around uh, 25 kilometers in, in length. Uh, so I, I definitely know that impacted my capability of being able to sustain 520 mile pace, you know, to a point where I was able to run 219.35. That came out to 519 mile pace and 318 per K pace uh, for the race. So. 
if you're paying attention to these types of things, you're gonna be much more effective at running under two hours and 20 minutes for the marathon. This is not easy. There's nothing easy about it. There's no easy method. Uh, uh, I'm just being you know, blunt and honest with you. If you wanna run a sub 220 marathon, you pretty much have to, you're gonna have to live and breathe it, okay? Especially if you don't have as much talent, you know, you don't have a lot of talent. I didn't have a lot of talent either. I really had to, to rely on, on my, my work ethic, really focus in on speed. I continue to focus on my speed work, uh, repeat 400s on the track, uh, right around 104 to 107 per, per rep with minimal rest, right around 60 seconds to 90 seconds per rep when I was very fit. Um, and if you're trying to run under two hours and 20 minutes, I have a course on rundreamachieve.com. I also have a training plan for sub two hour and 20 minute marathon athletes that are trying to get under this barrier. Feel free to let me uh, know in the comment section below if what has been the biggest concern, what has been the biggest problem for you in trying to break this barrier. Or if you have another time barrier you've been trying to break, maybe you're trying to break four hours and 30 minutes or maybe three hours and 30 minutes. Um, whatever it is, let me know in the comment section. Um, but I, I hope this video was helpful for you, just at least to hear from somebody who's done, you know, run under this time. Um, I'll tell you, it, it is a, it's an exciting uh, and, and a huge relief when you get across the finish line. And you know, when I came around the corner in Sacramento and saw 219.11 on the clock, you know, it, all I can say is all of the setbacks. You know, you'll you'll feel like. In training, you'll feel like you you know you just you just don't know what you need to do, and you wonder you know if you have the capability or if you're doing things correctly. You forget all the setbacks when you finally do it, okay? And but it's a process, and and no athlete gets under two hours and twenty minutes without some setbacks and without some heartache. So don't lose sight of your goals, okay? Stay committed, stay motivated, stay driven to what you want to do and you'll break two hours and 20 minutes. You have to have, again, if you're lacking talent, you're gonna to have to rely on your work ethic. It is You're gonna to have to be willing to go out there, do the double workouts, you know, be willing to go out there and do those tempo runs if there's nobody out there with you. Uh, place those water bottles out every 5K during, you know, on, on your long run course. Make sure you're practicing hydration. Pack, focus on recovery, jogging on recovery days. Again, there's no, shame in jogging okay jog on your recovery days i don't care if you're if you're running jogging 12 minute mile pace if you have the capability to run you know you go out and do repeat miles under you know under five minutes who cares how how slow you're running on your easy days okay your benefits of all your hard anaerobic workouts are going to come from that rest period okay so again you have to have that same amount of discipline on your hard days as you do on your on your, uh, you're gonna have to have that same amount of discipline on your easy days as you do on your hard days. So you have to back off and, and allow yourself time to recover so that you can get the highest return on your investment from all of your hard work. So, you know, this is just some, some tough love for you. I know that the athletes out there, such as yourself that's trying to do this, can do it. Uh, I can't promise you how quick it'll happen. I'll tell you that if you have a plan in place, um, if you're studying what the best athletes and the best marathoners that have done this. What do they do? How do they think? If you study them, you have a much higher percentage of success because you're gonna emulate what they're doing. You know, this is why I don't care if you're trying to break five hours or you're trying to break two hours and 20 minutes, or you're trying to break, you know, 4.30 for the mile or whatever it is. There are a lot of resources on under all my videos that are there for you on rundreamachieve.com. I believe in a 10 day taper. I believe in doing a recovery week Every fourth week, every at, at the end of the third week, going into the fourth week, we do a recovery week so that you can back down a little bit off of your volume and your intensity, recover a little bit more, then go into that next week ready, ready to attack. So again, it's not about volume. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. What are you putting into your mileage? What are you putting, you know, how much you know, emphasis are you placing on your speed, on your recovery, on tempo runs? developing your speed, staying relaxed and, and, and in control in your races, okay? Again, always focus on relaxation. The relaxed athlete is gonna be the most dangerous athlete when it comes to, uh, especially when it comes down to that athlete having uh, tapered down for the race. Remember, you're always in control of your thoughts, what you think, and, and 
you're in control of those particular things. You're not in control of what the weather's gonna be like on the morning of the race or or what the athletes around you are thinking or what they're, you know, how they're acting. Let them be stressed out if they wanna be. Okay, if you've done your homework and training, the training itself is gonna be the most difficult, most stressful as it should be. It should be the biggest test of, a, of an athlete trying to break two hours and 20 minutes. If you've done your homework and training, there's nothing that's gonna stop you and get in your way on the morning of the race. So make training the most demanding part of your preparation and pay attention to your recovery. And then when it comes down to the morning of the race or the week, even the week of the race, stay relaxed. You've done your work. You've done what you need to do to break two hours and 20 minutes. You've trained well below five minute mile pace, well below three minute K pace in training. You've, you've done much longer tempo runs. You've started developing varied pace workouts. You've started implementing that in your training. And then, and then following the following week with a long, slow, easy recovery long run, you've started to, again, you've changed your strategy. You've started to study and do the things that sub 220 marathoners do. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, if you have any other questions, concerns, feel free to leave me a comment below. Hit that subscribe button so when I make new videos, you'll be, you know, be notified of it. Um, and, and let me know. Uh, feel free to please give me a like as well on these videos. It helps the channel grow. It helps more people see these videos. So I definitely appreciate that as well. If you all have, a, uh, have any other questions, concerns, leave me a comment. And I will talk to you all in the next video.